Cheers, everybody. Got another episode of Smarty Pints coming at you. We got Graham, Alex, from the Homebrew Network, and we're here at Brew and Grow in Rockford, Illinois. And uh, we're going to be discussing chillers. Chillers. That sounds cool. Yeah, it does. And if you don't know what a chiller is, we're going to show you. You got different varieties of chillers. You got plate chillers. Mm -hmm. You got immersion chillers. Counterflow chillers. Counterflow chillers. Or just sinks full of ice water. Sinks full of ice water. It's like the, the lo-fi chiller. That's right. And then you also got your stainless steel immersion chiller, your copper immersion chiller. Yeah. And we're going to show you different kinds. Well, should we start with immersion? Yeah, let's go for that. All right, immersion. Pow! That's a big one. 50 feet of copper immersion chiller. Uh, we also had one to show the 25 footer. Yeah, where is it? Right there. So 25 footer, that's good for five gallon batches. Mm -hmm. 50 footer, 10 gallon batches, uh, approximately. So why don't you just, can you also use this with your five gallon? You certainly could. So just invest more money in case you want to get a bigger batch later. Yeah. Then obviously the more copper or stainless steel uh, that you have, the greater the surface area, the greater the chilling, the faster it gets done, et cetera, et cetera. Stainless steel. So why would somebody want stainless versus copper, Graham? Why would you want stainless over, I don't know, tell me. Well, copper does have a greater heating coefficient or heating exchange oh, coefficient. Oh, you have to worry about the oxidizing? Exactly, yeah. The stainless is not gonna oxidize the way that the copper might. It's easier to keep clean. Oh, so you could actually use sanitizer on this one. Yeah. Whereas with the copper, if you <clears throat> use sanitizer on your copper chiller, the um, the, the acids or the uh, doesn't uh, star sand. It's an acidic. It is. Yeah. So if you use star sand on this, it could oxidize the copper, which then will give you all the flavors in your beer. But an easy way to get around that is don't sanitize it. Yeah. Just put it in your wort about 15 minutes from the end of your boil, and the 212 degrees will sanitize it for you. That's a nifty trick, and you don't know that as a beginner home brewer, so there you go. Um, what's oh, and plus, stainless is nice and shiny and pretty. So yeah. if you like that, I don't know. Shiny, nice, but gets dull. Yep. And more efficient. So just for efficiency's sake, my choice would be I call it copper. copper. Yeah. But stainless is shiny. All right, what else do we have? Uh, I see, uh, what is that? This? Counterflow. Counterflow chiller. Let's, let's get these out of the way. So, this is uh, definitely a step above the immersion chiller. Yep. Instead of putting this in your wort, you're going to pass the wort through it. You can see you got your hose connectors here. So, your cold water will go one way, and then your wort will go another way. So, your input for water is right here. Your output for water is here. Your input for work would be here. Your output for work would be here. And you see how these guys are slightly smaller than these. This tube goes inside the bigger tube. So outside tube, the big tube, that's where the cold liquid is. And then inside there is a smaller tube that the hot work goes through. And uh, this is just one example of a counterflow. Yeah. There's other examples where people have, like Alex told me before, People have used garden hoses. Yeah, you basically picture something like this, but wrap a garden hose around each of these coils and then pass the cold water through the garden hose and then the wort through this. Yep. So there's another way to chill your wort before yeah. putting in your fermenter. How do you sanitize that? Oh, good point. That's a good point. <laughs> Julie, who's off camera, said, how do you sanitize this? How would you sanitize this? I have sanitizer through it. You could pass sanitizer through it. Pass or hot water through it. Hot water. You can like, put boiling water and, through this before your wort. I've seen some people in the network uh, who have autoclaves. <laughs> so they just yeah. autoclave the whole thing. I guess you could put it in the oven. Some people have put them in their ovens. Mm -hmm. But you That's want awesome. to be careful because since it's copper, it's going to come out, it's going to be very hot. Yes. So wear protection. So yeah, basically two ways, a sanitizing solution or just hot temperatures. Uh, all right. Next up, we got the plate chillers. Plate chillers. We got two types of plate chillers. Yes, we do. One is the Blickman. The Therminator. The Therminator. 
And the other one is this garden hose general name plate chiller. I have one of these. And uh, Alex has one on the rig that Brewer supplied him. It's made by Duda Chemicals. Duda? Duda. The Duda, the Duda Diesel Alternative Energy Store. There you go. There you go. Uh, the, the interesting thing about uh, this one, I didn't know it when I first bought it. I had no idea what these were for. These are for screws on the back end. Um, I have screws in mine and they are mounted on my rig and he has the same thing on his. The Blickman one is nice because it comes with its own little mounting stand. Uh, the theory behind this is you want to not have this touching anything else or as little as possible so that way it acts as like a heat sink so you're not conducting heat through something adjacent to it that it's sitting on. Well not to mention if you grab this with your hand it's going to be very hot Yes. because uh, it's copper. And uh, so, yeah, so basically, how do these work? How, how do they work? Well, um, both will work in similar ways. Uh, it's just that they are designed differently. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go over this one. Since okay. I've never used it. Okay. I'll go over this one. Um, this one works, uh, you've got uh, garden hose input on the top, you got your wart input and output on the bottom, and um, while the while the water is going through one plate, the wart is going through uh, another plate. So they're just passing through each other. Just like yeah, an Imagine like two combs interlacing. So you have the cold liquid going through all yep. these combs and then the hot liquid through that. So and they, they just meet up. Yeah, and they pass in opposite directions, just like the counter flow. But you're talking greater surface area. Yep. And, and more compact unit. And if you were to look at the side of this, you would tell that, well, that there, it does look like a comb here. They just they, they come together in very fine uh, unions, and uh, in the process, it's the opposite of heat exchanging. It's the cold exchanging. So um, by the time it comes out here, it should be 80 degrees or less. Yeah, yeah. Um, I use this here, and one pass it goes from 212 to you know 65 68 depending on how cold your groundwater is yep. if you do have issues if you live somewhere in the south and you have hot water coming out of the tap you can always put one of these uh, as a pre-chiller so okay. basically pass the garden hose through this dip this in a bucket of ice water and then have the output go to here so that way it's super chilled water so that way you can just fly your work through really fast so how does the blickman Therminator it, it works the same way. The main thing about it is it is larger. So you have more plates, greater surface area, uh, it's more efficient that way, it's faster. Uh, the other noticeable difference is that whereas on this one all the plates are on the front, on this one, or I'm sorry, all the inputs and outputs are on the front, here they're split on the front and back. What makes this important is if when you're cleaning it, if you flip it this way, you have all this area here for gravity to take effect and push all the little particles that are in there down, so it makes it easier to flush them out, to push them out. Or this one, you're only talking, if you flip it over, that much area. So just a minor difference. It's really important with these just because this is the last thing your work touches before any alcohol is present, before the yeast start working, that at that point it's most susceptible to bacteria setting up shop, so you really want to make sure this thing is clean each and every time, which means you have to be diligent about flushing it, back flushing it before and after each use, and like we talked about with the counter flow, then push sanitizer through it, or boiling water, or stick it in the oven, something like that. Yep. That's the most important thing, making sure that after you get done using it, you flush it several times, and then when I'm done with it, I run sanitizer through it and then follow it with water. So you don't want to leave sanitizer sitting in here on the copper. Yeah, good point. Yeah, when you're done using it, after you flush it, drain it, and set it aside. Don't don't store it in a bucket of sanitizer or anything like that. Because then uh, you uh, will oxidize your copper, mm -hmm. and then, then you get green goop coming out of it, yep. and it's not pretty. Not good. So, <clears throat> another something else to note is this is basically a small version of what the pros use. So, you know, imagine this, but modular, where they just have separate plates they can add or subtract to a, a big thing. It's the same concept, just on a smaller scale for homebrewers. So, your choice, you decide what you want to use. Um, I will say that these will be more expensive. 
Yeah, they will. Um, also, you can use it with just gravity, but most of the times you're going to want to pump. We're going to be using a plate chiller or a counter flow, whereas the immersion chiller, no pump needed, just plow Put it in the kettle. Yep. <laughs> if you don't want to go with one of these chillers, you can go the old-fashioned way and just plop it in the sink with some ice water around it. Just make sure to stir it. Yeah, you want to keep that liquid moving. Uh, if you have the your, your kettle full of hot work, you just plunk it in a, an ice bath and you walk away. The ice water is going to cool the layer of wort that's adjacent to the, the walls of the kettle. And if you just leave it there, then it's the job of the cold work on the outside to cool the rest of the work. The heating coefficient between the stainless and the liquid is much better than between liquid and liquid. So if you keep all that moving around, sloshing around, it's going to cool faster. Same goes for the ice water on the outside. You want to keep all that moving around too. Okay. Well, that about wraps it up. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Smarty Pints and how to chill your beer. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>